Hey, uh, good uh, afternoon from Area 51 Raceway. So we are here and we are looking at tools. Uh, I have covered a video on this quite a while ago. So we'll re kind of revisit this. And uh, basically I want to go over was the basic tools you would need to, you know, start chassis building. So that's one question that gets asked sometimes and, you know, what's required and stuff. So when I first started, um, I wasn't really too familiar what to get. So I kind of did what I could to search out stuff, you know, get advice when I first started doing it, obviously from Harry. And uh, what you want to start out with, I'm going to go over here. So, of course, the first thing you want is the soldering iron. And uh, this is uh, a different soldering iron than what I recommend because at the time when I started this, I bought this real expensive uh, soldering iron. It wasn't really necessary, but again... I didn't know any better so I'm just gonna let you know that the soldering iron that's available through Amazon is good enough to do a lot of chassis Harry has used it uh, that's what I actually first started out with and then I went to this soldering iron because I thought you know I don't know just to upgrade but that was just me at the time but to start out basically is to use one of those soldering irons which will be good enough for soldering and heating up brass and uh, that's probably the best alternative and the cheapest one I would recommend and then what we're going to go on to is cutting brass so cutting brass this is basically a miter saw you get through Amazon this one's worn out because I've used it a lot and it does the uh, channels of brass to fit in here so you do get a nice cut and you can even do an angle cut as you can see it's got angles here as well this is a fairly cheap tool uh, a little bit of muscle involved in doing it, but if you do it just lightly at a time and don't go down too hard, as you can see, you'll wear the blades out <laughs> after doing so many. This is a good tool to have. The blades worn on in this, and I need to, you know, get another one, but for replacement. And these are replacements are available for these. So, but a real good tool to start out with is this. Um, another set of hand tools you want to start out with also is the uh, Wera, you know, screwdrivers and stuff. So this is a PH000, as you can see the tip on it, it's fairly you know, small tip for small stuff. And then you have your flathead, which is the uh, point, uh, 0 0.4, which these work out well, or if you could find you know another set that's basic that you have lying around will work. But these two are really important. So this is the, uh, the hex heads, and these are the common ones we use for scratch building. So this is a uh, 0.9 right here. And this is a 1.3. And this is a later version or earlier version because it's not like the new ones, how they have a blue stripe right here and stuff. I mean, these are avail readily available from Slotco Corners. These two tools are real important to have because you'll need them to remove wheels and install wheels and so forth. And there's two different size uh, grub screws for wheels, depending if you're doing 132nd or like this chassis, which is 125th, which would be the 1.3 usually for the bigger wheels depending then what we're going to go on to is a tubing cutter tubing cutter fairly cheap from amazon uh this is when you're cutting your tubing for your axle so when you're cutting 8130 you put it in here and you roll it and then you clean the edges out with an exacto blade and uh which is you know really helps out a lot having this instead of having to use the miter saw because there's no way really to get a nice cut or if you have to hold it this is a great tool really must tool for cutting tubing uh, this will do the work for you know the 8130 stuff and also of course the exacto blades really important as well uh, make sure you get extra blades because you use this to clean the tube and other stuff this will clean brass up when you get that cut this will uh, trim it down nicely and scrape all that uh, I would say bird material because it'll be you know how would you say uh, have an edge on it and this will clean it up and uh, Next thing is very important, especially when you're building slot cars, is a gear press. This is a slot invasion gear press. Uh, there's other companies that make it that slot it and so forth. I like this one because it's made out of metal, opposed to the slot it. The slot it used to come in an aluminum, and then they went to a plastic, which I didn't really care for. But, I mean, it is what it is. If you want to get a plastic one, that's totally up to you. I do like this one because it uh, it's fairly easy to press and remove the gears, opinion gears from your motor. Uh, one thing though, they make two different size plates. So this is more of a commercial type 
thickness where they do make one that's thinner so you could get in between the smaller motors which are the distance between you know the end here the uh, can here to the to the end of the uh, to the bottom of the pinion and this is a little too thick so they do sell a thinner one that you could use for for the home uh, motors that we use this is more basically you know for commercial tractors use the different motors in there a little bit different so this is more of a thicker plate but you can get a thinner plate for it which uh, I do have I just haven't installed it but again this is a, a must tool right here and again if you it's great for removing pinions and installing pinion gears which we'll need to do because you want to adjust your you know get your uh, gear mesh right like I've done here which that's nice and smooth like butter and that's what you want and uh, very very good tool uh, next thing was important is a pin vise and uh, a set of uh, you know small drill bits will help as well and I do have a set of small drill bits. see I'm remembering this stuff as I go along to make sure I cover everything you get a cheap cheap drill bits from you know uh, Walmart or online as well I'm missing the 16th it's in the box up there that I use for making uh, body hole you know the uh, mount holes so uh, just be sure you get a decent brand because sometimes you'll get these and they'll be bent as you uh, move them around you'll see them do this they'll kind of move around it means that <laughs> The set's not, you know, too great. You just want to be careful that you get a decent set. But uh, all in all, you shouldn't be bent when you get them. I got one here that's bent. I think it's this one that I don't use because when you put it on a drill bit, it, it doesn't really, it isn't straight. It waddles around. So a uh, decent set of drill bits is good. And, of course, the pin vise. They make a different size one as well. I use this mainly for putting holes into the, uh, to make the body mounts for the screws. I usually start out small and then I use another bigger size, but this should be good enough to make holes of that size, and that's why I use this. And you make a, a slightly bigger one if you want as well. Now for uh, the stuff you need for soldering, actually, you know the things that help you solder. Uh, I recommend the Stay Clean stuff. Uh, you could use it if you want Bob's uh, Lucky Bob stuff if you want to get that. But this stuff comes in a big bottle, and this will last you a long time. I bought this about two and a half years ago. It's going on three maybe and I still got quite a bit left in there I think all the way up to here still and that'll last you a long time it's a good product and it'll help you solder brass together and also cleans as you uh, solder but you always want to clean your brass as uh, it's always said uh, clean brass is happy brass and then the other flux you want to get is paste flux for doing your wires uh, you want to be able to not use the acid flux on wires because what happens they'll get corroded and you'll have a problem and uh, this is good for wiring only on the motor and wiring to the motor and to your, you know, your guide lead and stuff like that. Your leads to your guide. This is good stuff to get. And this is from, you know, Amazon as well. And then your solder. Basically, you need a 6040. Don't get any silver solder. You don't need anything crazy. This is strong enough. As you can see, I used it on this. This is the same solder I use for this chassis. It's it's fine. It's good enough. You're not doing drag racing chassis like commercial cars that you launch them into a pillow. That's why the guys will use silver solder for uh, the drag racing commercial cars because they do you know accelerate a lot more and then hit a pillow or whatever they have on the end of it to capture it. But uh, this is good enough. 6040 rosin solder. This is 0 0.8 millimeter. That's thin enough. You don't need anything too thick. That'll melt nice. You know. That'll melt nicely, you know, as you hit it with the soldering iron, it'll flow nicely. And then we're going to get on to, of course, measuring stuff. So you'll need a ruler. This is really important. A ruler is super important to have. And this is a small, you know, simple one that you could get. Or you get one a little bigger. I just like this one because it's tiny and it's not big and cumbersome. And then, of course, the most, another important tool you should have is a caliper. Now this is, I've had this for a long time was being a mechanic. Uh, I've had this for like, gosh, I think over 25 years. And, um, this was expensive when I got it. They're fairly cheap. Now you get through Amazon for under 20 bucks, but a caliper is really important and please get a metal one. Don't get a plastic one because the plastics will, the ends will wear out and be too near the jaws. So get a metal one. This is a real important tool. And, uh, for, you know, doing measuring of your chassis or your tires and stuff like that or, or whatnot, just trying to get your, you know, what you're measuring out. 
your dimensions for your chassis. This is extremely important. This is a must, and they're not very expensive either. And you can get these fairly on Amazon or anywhere else. Another thing to get, now these are oversized, are nut drivers. 8 or 10 millimeters is a good size, usually what I, what I have for what, you know, the uh, guide nuts. But make sure you get the smaller ones. These are ridiculously big because they're for the automotive, you know, and uh, mechanical for large vehicles. So they do make smaller ones. So usually 8 and 10 millimeters is what I use. I don't believe the flags are any other different size. I could be wrong, but this usually is an 8 right here, which fits in there. And this is 10 for the bigger uh, Coford style ones. So I would uh, get those two as well. Uh, so that basically is really to get you in the door to start a chassis. As far for uh, as far as uh, you know, truing wheels and tires, truing tires. Excuse me. Um, you can use a piece of sandpaper and you know do it that way if you're a beginner. Uh, tire truer is a good in, is a good investment, but I don't want to overwhelm people with a very expensive piece of tool. If you plan on just trying this one time. Uh, again, there's ways to do this. I mean, you could put this on the end of a drill as well and, you know, tape the drill and get a piece of sandpaper and sand it that way. If you don't want to spend on the tire shear because you're a beginner, you know, the example, if I had it like that and then I locked this down and uh, let it spin and then get a piece of sandpaper and sand it down. Or you could get a piece of paper on a piece of if your track, tape it and then use the track power and then just clean them up that way. At least if you get them somewhat true, it'd be fine. A tire true would be better, but again, that's that's a you know a high dollar item. You're talking about 180 bucks, I think it was. I can't remember. And that's without a reciprocator. You don't need a reciprocator. Uh, you could do it by hand if you want. That's fine. These do true fast. Your thing tires true pretty quick, uh, and uh, you shouldn't have a problem doing it. You know, with a piece of sandpaper if you're first starting out. But again, this is all aimed toward the beginner who's just trying to get into it. These are really the basic tools. I think I've covered everything that I could think of. Uh, if you guys have any, you know, questions or anything, please, you know, comment and uh, let me know. And uh, as always, you uh, take care and have fun racing. Right